Hi guys, welcome to episode four of A Secrets of an Independent Estate Agent. Today I speak to Katie, director of number 86, which is an independent estate agency in Wales near Swansea. Katie and I go into the concept of how she set up her online model as well as her high street model, how she creates content and where she sees technology going in the industry in the future. So if you're a small independent agent and are looking at ways to adapt your business, this is a great episode for you and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to this episode here. Um, I'm with Katie from number 86 in Wales. Hi Katie. Hello. Uh, so Katie's been a client of ours for quite some time. Uh, I've seen some of her amazing bits of content and I'm really interested in her concepts as an estate agent. Uh, so I brought her on here to explain a bit more. So Katie, if you'd like to introduce yourself, a bit about who you are and your background. Okay, so my name's Katie Cromwell. Um, I'm 34 and um, I'm the director of number 86 estate agency. Um, I've been an estate agent for the last of eight years um, with the two of Swansea's biggest companies and decided to set them up on my own. So what were the, what were the two companies you worked for before? I worked for Peter Allen. Um, that's where I first, that was my first estate agency job. And then from there, then I went on to work with Dawson's. So they've all um, based in SA4. And what, um, was that one of your first jobs or what was you before? Hairdresser. Yeah, hairdresser. <laughs> Prior to that. Um, I, to be honest, I had my first daughter quite young. So um, I had my first daughter when I was 16. So I sort of did college in the evenings, then did a few sort of different bits and bobs. Did a little bit of a state agency when I was about 18. Um, and then... What, had my what, uh, and what, was, what role was that? Um, so that was Latin space, that was. Yeah. Um, so I've got into that by accident. So I went to go back a rental property um, and the man there sort of said, you know, we've got a position available if you want to come and, you know, work for us. So I did. And, you know, it's just nice, isn't it? Being able to see the people and things. So it was good. And then, so when's a bit of hairdressing and then, and then how did you fall back into a stay and see? Um, well, my second son had turned two and I thought, right, okay, so it's time to sort of get back into work now. Um, and it, I loved it when I was sort of working in the lessons agency. So I thought, right, that's what I'm going to go and do. So, um, what, so when you, did you start originally in lettings then? Like as in the, when you went back into it? Uh, no, no, that we went straight back in then to sales, but everything had changed so much, you know, within that short space of time, really. Like the diary um, where I was when I was younger, then that was all sort of on a paper diary. Um, and now things are on like a database. So, you know, I had to basically learn everything from scratch. Um, many great so, so, so was it, so was it, uh, so was it like the, the old days when you first started in yeah, hot box, paper yeah. diary? Yeah, that's it. It was, it was fun. You know, it was, it was the meeting people that I liked more than anything, but the difference, and it was, you know, to be honest with you, it was only about five, six years was crazy. So I think um, in Peter Allen, they were using a system called Encore, if you've ever used, you've probably yep. used you. So it's quite intense, isn't it, to begin with, to sort of start working with that. Um, but I was lucky because they used the same one then in Dawson's as well. So um, it didn't have to train on anything else. So uh, what was it like to be, what would you say it's difference between someone, say, starting in your company yes. and someone starting in a corporate uh, when you started? So I think, you know, it, it's a lot more relaxed um, with me then. It's not so heavily targeted and, you know, constant targets, targets, targets. It's more so based around the customer, really. You know, we're quite lucky. The girls that we've got here, we're like a little family. And I think, you know, your staff tend to do more for you when you've got like a nice way, you know, and, and I respect what they say. And, you know, to be fair, I've not needed really to train them a great deal other than on the system. They both know what they're doing. Is that because you reckon um, you've based recruitment on, on finding people similar to what you feel yeah. is right? So you haven't got to train people on being yeah. a personality. They're, they're yeah. already using that individuality that... That's it. And I think it's important. Your tribe, effectively. To sort of, you know, to let them express themselves in a way as well, rather than, you know, having a speech working from that, you know, and I think, well, our customers, they, they seem to prefer that, the fact that it is more relaxed on the phones, 
just whichever way you know that we do it here really it's it's not formulated every phone call is different and so what made you what made you leave uh your job what was the process going through that was it a case of you you decided one day you woke up and thought i want to do this myself or was it a case of a transition that you were see that things were starting to change because you had purple bricks are coming into the you know into the scene and i kind of liked the technology side of things that they had and i just felt that you know i i was doing things then in a way that i wouldn't necessarily do if it was my business and i think i to be honest i just started looking into it by accident and then it just kind of snowballed and then it was all i could think about you know, it was like, oh, this would be better to do, and it would be better to do this that way, if you see what I mean. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I used to do exactly the same thing, where my partner would come back from work, yeah, and I'd be on a kitchen table, and I'd written random bits of paper, of like spider webs going out, because it's yeah. a never-ending, mm-hmm. I could change the whole world, yeah. and then starting from, how would someone be able to book a viewing differently with me? It's putting your own spin on everything, and I thought, like, you know, why can't estate agencies be quirky? Like even, you know, like the, the, the sort of branding and the signs and things that I had, like, you know, very rarely will you see really nice signs. Mm. So I just wanted to put like my spin on everything really and just do it so, my way. What, how did you come up with the concept of number 86? Um, well, we went through loads of different names, as you can imagine. And you're just like scribbling random things down. But I wanted something different. Um, and something that's sort of stood out a little bit. So I was born in 1986, so that's where sort of number 86 came from. Everyone always asks, you all know how old I am. Um, and <laughs> I thought then that the door um, fitted in with it as well, because it's every number, you know, every door has a number. And yeah, nice. I just thought it was, it was something that I hadn't seen before, and I, I liked it, so I thought, right, you know, maybe other people will as well. So you said things are changing and you want to look at um, a more online uh, view of how the stay can be done. What, what, um, cause you, cause you've still got high street premises. Yeah. So like run through the concepts of when you first started up, did you have a premises straight away? No, so, so I started off working from my living room. Um, and, it, you know, I wanted to see first whether the demand was there before signing myself up to something, you know, that you're going to be tied in for years. So it started really, really well. I did a leaflet drop and got a couple of clients from that and it sort of built from there. But I didn't feel as if I'd given it 100% without having a base. But I did, you know, I've got three children, so it was quite hard for me to be able to work from home and answer the phone without the dogs barking or the baby crying. But yep. I felt like without the old face, people couldn't really see what we were about. Mm. I felt like I needed it. That sort of, you know, the, the shop window then and, the, you know, the, the village of Pontiac Lights, you know, we've always got sort of people popping back and forth. It's really, really friendly. And I think that the, the office for me is what made it snowball and to as crazy that it's gone now. So you effectively started almost as an Just online, me. online estate agent. Yeah. Uh, almost starting the fabrics of how it'd be that's it moving into a almost a a high street not a high street but maybe a, an actual a premises for people to come yeah. visit whereas i think a lot of agents are struggling with the reverse of that how do you take a high street and pull it out so there's still the convenience and actually the presence of someone because i i believe there's still a there's still a necessity for a premises whether that's on a high street or not high street the high street if it's on a high street has to be convenient someone has to be able to drive up to your office park outside come and say hi or have every bit of that convenience uh, without having to see you whereas um i think a lot of premise a lot of agents at the moment are stuck on those busy streets where someone's having to throw keys otherwise they get a traffic warden attack them um so that was an interesting concept so uh, what what um did you have any major obstacles you had to overcome? It was just, it, I was scared taking that step to get the office. Like my husband, more so than me, he was really worried about it. He said, look, is this something that you really, really need? Because of course you've got to furnish it and all the rest of it. But I was adamant. And my nan, bless her, she was like, yes, come on. I think you need it. Go for it. She was going, get the office. Um, and we were lucky. The, the lady that I rent off, 
initially she did it on a six month tenancy for me. So if, you know, we didn't, if it didn't sort of work, then I would be able to sort of leave. So that made me take the jump. So that was a bit scary. But then the other thing I was terrified about was just employing people. Mm. So, so scared about that because I think, you know, you've, you've got to make sure then that, you know, you've got the money coming in to, to be able to pay them. Um, and I didn't want to sort of take somebody on and then have to let them go quite quickly. You, you know what I mean, don't you? With that, yeah, I mean, that's really you're, hard. You to, you're committing your, uh, your, their, their livelihoods to you as well, exactly. effectively, because like they could commit something and if you can't pay them, that, then yes, that's not in a nice position to be in with it at all. And that, that was really, really frightening. But it got to the point, I think, you know, we, it had gone so big that I couldn't manage it on my own really anymore. And I was quite lucky because June came just at the right time and then it went even more crazy. So I've been lucky with, you know, the way that everything has fallen into place. But I think it, it was just, well, it's a big thing to do, isn't it? You know, and it just seemed to get so big so quickly. And then it's just like, wow, how did that happen? And it's keeping, you've got to keep sort of growing as a patient because I've never managed anyone before or anything like that. So all of that side of it is new to me. And then you've got like all the employment contracts and all the rest of it. But, you know, you just sort of take it on the chin and just try and do your best with it, really. So, so what... Uh... If you can run like, so what's the concept now for 86? You've got a shop premises. Do you do just traditional stay in see? Do you do I think you online know. or have you it, offered it, either? It's a mixture of the two, basically. So, the, you know, like the clients have the option whether they want to conduct their own viewings. Um, other than that, it's basically, you know, the same service that we offer. So, you know, the traditional customers, they can go on to the online portal see what's going on you know and the same for the people who wanted to have an online service mm. i just thought it gives people the best of both worlds basically because you have some who are quite confident and want to do with it themselves i mean you know we still do all of the photographs the floor plans so the only difference really is the fact that one group will do their own doings and you know with their traditional then we sort of handle all of that for them so rather than having the concept of maybe um how some online estate agency set up hoping just to dominate the whole UK market and yeah. they soon realise after a while they haven't got enough money to do that. Yeah. You've taken the 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 view of it doing something more localised, but from a level of um, either convenience or someone if someone has got the time to conduct certain parts that would be offered in estate agency service, if they can do that, then that's the reduced part because it's not enough it you know, haven't got your manpower then taking up that time exactly and i think when it when i first did it like the way that we work it so if they do want to go down um the online route they pay you know a certain amount of the fee up front um as their marketing fee so in the beginning you know you need that money coming through as quickly as possible basically so even mm -hmm. if it was just a little something that would keep coming in every time we did a new instruction um and then the rest then they pay sort of on completion so it, it was just a way of having like some money coming in sooner rather than later. Um, and we haven't got the costs then for like the fuel, for going out and doing every win. So they, you know, it kind of works out quite well, really, it just depends on which way, you know, people want to play it. And so I've seen you create some awesome bits of content. Being a client of ours, obviously it's come through more and more. Uh, and we can see that we can see the benefits of that. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you go about creating your content? Have you got I, a process in mind? I tend to sort of base it on, you know, what discussions really I've had with clients over the weeks. Um, I mean, you want to make sure that it's current. Um, you know, and I, I try to sort of keep it as local, really, as possible with whatever information that we are given. Um, and it's just sort of letting people see a little bit about who you are, really, as as a person rather than just having, you know, just blank writing that could be from anybody. It's more sort of yeah. directed, but they, they know that it's from me. Yeah, because I think uh, it's really hard. I think um, we notice it in our in our set part. You have uh, some, you have agents in different camps. You have agents who uh, want to take control of your own content, which we appreciate because it's your voice. Mm -hmm. But then you have some agents who want to do that but don't know how to write content or don't want to write content or doesn't want anyone else to write content and and you think 
you've either got to decide whether you outsource it to someone so they get to know your content or your vo tone of voice, mm. you've a, or you do it yourself, or you employ someone to do it your, on your behalf in, yeah. internally. But what I've noticed from yours is that you do some really good stuff that is very relevant to your local area, but also uh, it, gets, it gives a sense of it being number 86 and Katie's, yeah. your tone of, on mm. it. Um, has that come naturally to you? Or have you had to d develop that? But to be honest, I find it easier to sort of write something as I'm saying it. Like you remember when it came to the first meeting, I was terrified at the thought of having to write anything myself. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, as long as it comes from the heart, you know, and what you're saying is, you know, is, is genuine, especially in the current conditions then. I think everything's got to come from the heart with what's going on at the moment. Um, but it's not something that I'd say sort of came naturally. I just, I just write things down as I would, like I'm speaking with you now. Mm. I, I just find it easier to sort of do with that. Well, I think I think you're I think you do the right the right process because I think uh, we have a lot of um, agents in the past who have struggled with that and, and overthinking a concept. You then three weeks down the line you get it out. It's either irrelevant because it's gone beyond the time, yeah. or it's so over engineered as a piece of content then you lose the personality to it. And yeah. like one of one of my first interviews uh, with a guy called Andrew, Andrew said like he said in our, one of our groups. I've had pieces where I've taken 25 minutes to write it, outperform something that I've taken days to try and think of a concept around it. And I think that because it comes from your passions as an agent and how you feel within a certain issue, which is based on the, the conversations that you're having from your customers. So it's more going to ooze out more of a helpful resource to someone rather than just being a bit of content that's just there because it's content. So, um, what sort of tools do you use to, to help create your content? Um, well, I, I sort of tend to go through, you know, news articles, things like that. Really, I might see something in a magazine and I think, oh, actually, I quite like the concept that they've got with different bits of this. Um, we're on, like, you know, the sort of town Facebook group. Um, so you can see quite a lot of what's going on in the village and things from there. Um, you know, and about, like I say, it, it's just sort of, wherever really you could just be sitting down and you think oh my gosh right okay I need to put this in and then it's literally just a, well, with a life cycle you can just sit there type it in and gosh how's it go? <laughs> yeah. and what, and, um, so how do you get your artwork and stuff like that have you got um, to... so yeah I I was doing it wrong I think to begin with because I was just sort of finding random images here there and everywhere um but there is an app I, was, I can't remember what the name of it is now to be honest is it or something like that. We've got um there's some agents that we've said in the past have used Canva and That's it. Canva. Yeah, so I've signed up to that and what I really like with that is the fact that you can like brand it with your own logos and things as well. And they've yeah. got so many images and things on there and it tends to match like your colour scheme. Yeah. Which is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. And I only found that out about two weeks ago and I haven't stopped using it since. And where who did you find it out from? You guys. Oh, <laughs> I think it was on, um, I think somebody had asked a question on one of the groups about, you know, images and things like that. And I was like, ooh, just have a nose. Yeah, so, there's another one. Another yeah. one is an Unsplash, I think, is another a couple of ones that agents use as well, which is quite a, Unsplash. I'll have to write it down. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Um, so, so uh, how do you distribute your marketing? So you said, like, through um, Lifecycle. Yeah. You do, do you do... Um, so you, you put it onto, you've got obviously the facility to do it onto sort of social, etc. Do you do, do you run ads, Facebook ads? Do you? Um, so we run um, Facebook ads. We do, um, it's like in the instant valuation ads. And we're running the social distant advert then as well. So the aimed at the people who've filled in the instant valuation. Because you've had quite good successes in the last eight weeks yeah. of that as well, haven't you? It's been amazing. Which is like, you, you performed really well, especially with like, you know, a, a smaller branch network and and being like probably your headcount in your patch compared to say other places in the in in the in the UK, um, you've done really well. I think retargeting that, especially when now you've probably got as you you guys in Wales are allowed to move out of this period of COVID, um, you've got a nice little pipeline probably ready for you to hopefully jump on. It gives you a nice head start. You know, to begin with, which is great. So we've done. Has that, has that been easy? Well, my valuers love doing them. 
She's absolutely yeah. loved it. The only problem will probably be now getting her back out afterwards. But <laughs> genuinely, she thinks it's great. And, you know, because you can see the photos and things like that. And she'll phone me. We'll bounce ideas off each other. And then just send it out there. And it's, the customers seem to really like it as well. Have you got any other hints and tips for anyone out there as well? In regards to content or tools that you use? I think like, do, you, do you think an agent should have an online platform behind their scenes? Yeah, definitely. I think you need it 100%. I think if you haven't got it, the amount of time you, you're going to spend writing things and putting them onto all different, you know, social, it's, it's just, it's not going to work. It just needs to be streamlined and with you guys, everything is. Mm. So where do you, what three things do you think that estate agency needs to be, it needs to be changed in estate agency? So I think the whole thing needs to be like streamlined from, you know, sort of booking evaluation, you know, to them uploading documents, um, you know, ID, property information forms. I think the more forms we can get people to fill in online, it, it's just going to speed everything up so much quicker. You've got all of the documentation then before you go out and it's just a case of going out and taking the house on. I literally, I think, I think it, the whole thing needs to be like streamlined so it all works right. together. Efficiencies, isn't it? Really? Because yeah. you do you find... You're probably a bit different because when you set up your concept, you looked at this already. But I think you might find, I mean, maybe in the last eight weeks, the owners have looked at this, but it's easier to employ loads of staff to do loads of different jobs. When actually, if you stripped it all back and looked at uh, creating an efficiency better within the company, you can still have the staff there. It just means that it could be more productive and actually group given an amazing customer experience, not being bogged down with filling forms in. Yeah. And it could just be like, here's a link, fill it out. So yeah, I, I I agree. Yeah, efficiencies. Have you got any other any other tips you would say, or any other re views that you would say that the industry needs changing? I think you know embracing technology is probably another one. I mean, I know a lot of agents are quite frightened about it, and you know they don't really want to do certain things because they think it'll have a negative effect in other aspects. But I think you've just got to embrace it because you know things have changed so much even within the last well, God in the last couple of weeks basically the whole thing has just been sort of turned on its head you know and I just think yeah, people have got to embrace it because I think more and more people are going to want you know to deal with the majority of things online Convenience. And you've got to sort of keep up really to be able mm. to to stand out I suppose because because when I first met you, you you you're not you're not um I wouldn't say that you're a techie person in, yeah. in, in how you do stuff but you obviously see the value in it you're you're not you, you might be, what I've, what I've enjoyed working with you for is the fact of like, you want to trial, you know where the route's probably going with this. You probably, yeah. you know you need to go down that route. But rather than being fearful, you've jumped in two feet, not scared, yeah. embraced it and learned it. Whereas I think the learning part is sometimes, you say, some people could say technology doesn't work. It's because they haven't embraced it enough to learn a new way of doing something that needs to be done with that tech to make it more efficient for them. It's finding the right company, though, who are able to make that tech. Because, like, you know, obviously, we, I thought a lot about it. You know, we've tried a few different, um, like, CRM systems. Um, you know, all promising, yeah, you know, obviously, they, they, they've all been cloud-based. But they sort of promised to streamline the whole thing, and then it doesn't really work. Yeah. Um, you know, there was two different ones that we've tried. I mean, the one that we're with, that, you know, at the minute is a little bit better but it's still quite not as thick as what it could be. So it's mm. finding, like obviously you guys have changed everything basically, even down to like, you know, the branding that you've, that you've done for me. With all the other companies that it's been done, it's never quite been what I wanted. It was perfect. So I think it's finding a company to work with that actually knows what they're doing and is thinking of all of these new things before, like I, I know what I want to happen, but I don't know how to make right. it. Yeah, and usually, usually it's me messaging you at random o'clock at night, like other clients, saying, and "I thought or something," <laughs> and you're thinking, like, yes. I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing, though, you know. And I think that's that's the important side of it. And like, you know, I know you guys would you you just be able to do it, you know. Be, like, I'd be thinking, you know, that might be good, but you you'll be able to put it into a place and into a system where it works amazing whereas other people are but you can do that but you've got to add this onto it and then that yeah. doesn't quite link to the other thing but i think 
you know, with you guys, the whole thing soon is just, it's just going to be amazing. I can't wait. <laughs> um, so where do you see the industry going probably in the next five years? So I think it, you've got, you've got a quite an interesting concept on here because you're already, you've already going down that journey, but I've done the groundworks already for that. I think, you know, so like the independents like me, I think it's quite easy to sort of adapt and change quite quickly anyway. I think, you know, where you've got the big corporates, I think, you know, it's that business model, I think, that would probably need to change quite a lot. I think probably in the sense where they may have like just one head office, it'd be a huge head office, but everything will sort of be run from there rather than having all the different high street branches that they've got. Yeah. So, so do, you see, do you think they, they'd end up probably hybriding in, hybrid, sort of hybriding into like a, I think a partner model? To. Yeah, I think, I think you, have, you will have to because, you know, things do change. And I don't think either one, you know, the traditional service needs the online aspects to it as well. You know, I think you've got to have the technology in place that, you know, that the hybrid online agents seem to have to sort of move forward. But I think, you know, people want to see who they're dealing with. Yeah. You know, they don't want to be passed around pillar to post. So, I mean, you know, like there were aspects with paper bricks that I really liked. But what I couldn't get my head around is that once the house was sold, you were sort of sent off to a, you know, a sales progression company then up in, you know, well, probably based up in London somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they don't know local tradespeople who can come out and, you know, if there was an issue with the sale So I think you, they're going to need to have to combine the two. Yeah. I think, you know, I think that's how it will sort of go eventually. I don't think they'll ever be able to do it fully online. I think there will always be that aspect that people want to know who they're dealing with. Um, but yeah, it'll definitely be... I think, I think it has to go com combined with... Uh, you have to establish a purpose or identity as a brand mm -hmm. to be different. You have to find your unique audience and then almost viability of having tech freeze up your time to spend more time with that audience exactly. is where I, I mean, that's what I feel. And I think probably yeah. where, why you've become successful in your patch is because you've realized that technology is needed to create efficiencies and, and to make you be able to create your own brand identity and spend the time with the people more and providing that service that is required, which you're right, you know, if you look at something like Purple Bricks, it's easy to get the offer. I know it's obviously that, that is sometimes a bit harder with them as well, but it's, in some cases it's easier to get the offer. It's just getting it through to the finishing post and actually people having an amazing experience, not just the case of we've got our money now. It's like, how did that journey go? Was it painful, that person? Did they end up hating you as an estate agent when they were handing over your keys because they know they've got to pay you a couple of thousand pounds because it's just you're forcing it by a contract um i mean i've i've had a couple numerous conversations in the last eight weeks where i've had people in my local area messaging me saying like i haven't had, i haven't heard from my stage in the seven weeks mm. i haven't heard anything from them i'm on the market with them and like it's just and you think it's crazy even now even the last sort of few days when we've opened up i said do you heard anything no I haven't heard anything at all and it's like what service is that being provided for them no, I am. So I think, yeah, you're you're right. I think. So do you think? Um, do you think corporate estate agency will will die in the like, next ten years? I don't think it'll so much die. I just think they, you know, they're going to have to sort of really think out of the box, really, on how you know there'll be major changes there. I think the whole thing will sort of be restructured, and I think that you know they won't need to have as many branches as what they've got now. And and use technology to actually be able to do that, isn't it? Yeah, I think, yeah. But, you know, it, I suppose the difficulty that you've got then is you've got more staff that you've got to try and get on board with your new vision that you've got for that business. Yeah. And sometimes that can be quite difficult. Can't that, it? Well, we, we know that. We experience that. That's the reason why our, our clients are ideally between the one and five branch yeah. independents, because like you've, you've experienced with us, like the process we try and go through. It's almost an education process of just trying to help you on your journey of thinking differently, uh, but trying to embrace that maybe with hundreds of staff across the country, you're then reliant on individual managers accepting it and then area managers accepting it all the way back to head office, which is you get one break in that chain, no one wants to learn it, and then you get these rogue branches where no one, no one, everyone hates it. Yeah. And when you've got other branches that are like, this is amazing. So yeah, you're, you're completely right on that. Um, so I'd like to thank you for your time today. Okay. Uh, really appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Katie. Thank you.